I'm saying that those of you, your bank account would look different if you stop being fake. God can't bless you while you fake. You would already be in a relationship if you stopped being fake. If you would have just told him who you are off the cuff, he would have accepted you. But you thought you had to be fake. And the fact that you was fake and he caught you in the lie, that's why he ain't with you. If you just would have told him off the cuff, this is what you're getting, he probably would have been like that. You still had that job if you hadn't lied and said you knew Excel. <laughs> you just, you just should have said you don't know Excel, but you need the job, though. You didn't went in on Excel. You didn't even know Excel. You done got fired. They get your first week. They were like, all right, we got this Excel spreadsheet. You like Excel. <laughs> on your resume, you put you was Excelled out. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you most of us are so desperate. Most of us are crying to God. Most of us are saying we're not where we want to be. And God is saying you're not where you want to be because you fake. You a phony. You're trying to pretend to people to be something you're not. That if you would just be honest, you'd be further along. Praise God. How many in this room for me before we get into the word? How many of you are going to make a commitment that, God, from this day forward, I want to feel comfortable being honest with you if I can't be honest with nobody else? As of today, just come on, come on, come on. I want to help you. I'm not here to preach. I want to help you. How many of you are just honest? Amen. Is that all right? I want you to be comfortable being honest. All right, good. Let's go to the word. We ready. All right, we ready. Praise God. We ready now. Amen. Somebody cut the timer off. I ain't, I ain't even got started yet. I see 27 minutes. I ain't even got started yet. Amen. Let's go. First slide, if you don't mind. Let's go with the first slide. God, God told me to um, give you the definition of forward. Forward. Let's, I want you to look at it real quick. It's a verb, right? To further, right? That's the further. Amen. So what I want you to do right now, I want you to think about your life. And I want you to think about a, a part of your life that could be fur, where you could be further along the road, let's travel. <laughs> further along the road, let's travel. I want you to think of a part of your life like, yo, man, I should be further than where I am right now. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And I want you to take ownership. Now, Jeremy gave me a new word today. Jeremy said extreme ownership. Jeremy said the book told him. What was the book, Jeremy? What was the name of the book? That's the name of the book. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. And the whole book is about that, amen. And so get the book and read it. It's called Extreme Ownership. And that's what I want you to do. From this day forward, you about to go to a whole nother level because you're about to take what? You about to take what? Praise God, Kevin, praise God, praise God. Good to see you, my brother. Come on, you about to take what? Listen to me, we connected to God, y'all. We don't have to be fake. We don't have to be fake anymore. I wanted to free you up. I remember when I used to be fake. I remember when, and I wasn't trying to be fake. I just felt I wasn't going to be accepted if I wasn't who they thought I was. Does that make sense? So I, so I, so I was what I thought you wanted me to be so that you could accept me. And then God says that you're trying to be something that you're not, so you're never going to be accepted. So just be whatever you are. Nobody's preaching to you to be something else. I'm telling you that when God created you, he had something in mind. We need to be that. I remember Trey Hayden used to tell me all the time, E, you're minding your major, you're majoring your mind. I used to be like, what in the world? He like, bruh, you need to be more. I didn't realize that God did take me to Oakwood, but he didn't want me to take the same path that many of my friends that were in theology. God wanted me to go back in the world. So I looked foreign to my boy because it wasn't what? This is what God always had for me. But there was a time where I would be what Trey or Irv wanted me to be because when I wasn't that, it didn't seem like they accepted me the same way they accepted me when I dressed the way they wanted me to dress. When I talked the way they wanted me to talk. And perhaps if I would have just been myself, they still would have accepted me. I just felt like they wouldn't accept me if I was myself. And so I pretended to be something I wasn't. And I wasted a whole bunch of time because I ended up coming back to myself. And we still cool. Irv with Jess in Michigan State. We still cool. 
So, so God is saying you don't have to be fake. I know you in your mother's inmost parts before you were created. Come on, before you were born, I knew you. If you got a sexual addiction, just tell me. If you have a, you an alcoholic, just tell me. If you can't read, just tell me. God says when you was at Oakwood, you couldn't read. Why didn't you just tell me you couldn't read? Why was you faking it like you could read and you were skipping class, not because you wanted to skip, but you skipped on the days that they was going to make you read out loud. You should have just confessed you couldn't read and I could have helped you. I'm just telling you, some of you in this room, man, God got so much for you and you can't get it because you're being fake. So I want you to think about an area. Go back to the, uh, the definition. I want you to think about an area, according to the word forward, where you can go forward. The adverb, in the direction one is facing or traveling, toward the front. I press toward the mark of a higher, I press toward, don't nobody press backwards. You don't press backwards, you press forward. And there are those of you in this room, because of what you've been through, you are quitting, you are giving up. You are surrendering. That is not God-like. That is not a characteristic of God. God didn't give you that. The enemy told you to be by yourself. The enemy told you to be lonely. Why? Because when he rejected God, he ran from God. Don't you run from God. Don't you run from your calling. Don't you run from your gift. Don't you run from the struggle. That struggle was meant to make you stronger. That struggle. Let me tell you something. I'm just being 1,000. Boy, when you give your life to Christ, you could be so arrogant. When God gives you a gift and you in that gift, man, you could be so arrogant. I never knew I was going to be this. God is so smart that he knew I was going to be this. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. God knew when I was a high school dropout, when I was living in abandoned buildings, eating out of trash can, God never even saw me like that. God been saw me like this. Oh, y'all miss what I just said. I'm talking to somebody. God don't see you like your mistake. You see you like your mistake. God don't see you like that. God didn't, God don't, listen to me. I got one homeboy who always would remind me when I see him. He always want to remind me. Remember that car accident you got into when you were somewhere, being somewhere you were? I'm like, why does he always want to remind me? God don't even remind me of that. <laughs> like every time I see my man, that's all he want to talk about. But I get it though, because I'm walking in my gift I guess that may, that's offend you, so you got to try to always remind me of the worst part of my life because you don't want to accept the great part of my life. I'm not mad at you, bro, but God didn't see me like that. God saw me as this, and because God saw me like this, he allowed that to happen because God knew if nothing ever happened to me and I just got this, that I would be arrogant. But some of the mistakes I made is what made me humble. Some of the mistakes, the mistakes I made is why I connect to other people. It ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't the PhD that make me humble. It ain't the New York Times bestseller that make me humble. It's the stuff that I got into that God had to come and get me out himself. God is so good. God said, I'm gonna let, I'm, you, you about to be so high, I'm going to have to take you a little low first. <laughs> you, boy, you had no idea where I'm taking you. You have no idea. You have no idea. Somebody told me today, they about crying. I was, what's up? They said, your presence. I said, my presence is a blessing to you? There was a time my, ple my presence wasn't a blessing to nobody. Probably not even my wife. God said, I'm taking you so high. I'm going to have to let you experience some stuff so you can be humble. Because if you don't go through nothing, you ain't going to be humble. You tripping on what you've been through when some of the stuff you've been through is nothing but God taking you through something so you can get your priorities straight and you can know that it ain't you. Because sometimes you're so smart, you think it's you. you got... Let's go to that last definition. This thing is deep. Let's go to this last definition and we're going to get into the word today. Praise God. We're going to get into the word. The last one, onward. Say that with me. To make what? Come on, onward. To make what? Toward a... You all, that was your praise spot right there. Come on. That's your praise spot. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. Well, I know the plans that I have you toward, you said the Lord of hosts. God said, I know the plans that I have for you. 
I got plans for you. You ain't the only one with plans for you. I got plans for you. I'm talking to somebody in this room. You would be further along the road less traveled if you would surrender your plans and go with the ones that the creator has already constructed for you. He already got plans for you. He already got it mapped out. Why are you trying to figure it out when he already figured it out? Before you were born, he had it figured out. He already gave you your gift. He already gave you your assignment. He already put you in the right path. He already connected you with the right you got everything you need. Your will is the only thing getting in the way. You got your own will. God got a plan and you got one. Y'all both got a plan. Your plan is what's messing up the plan. Can I just be honest? Your plan is messing up the plan. Huh? You want to be comfort, comfortable, he got a calling. No, come on, I'm talking to somebody in this room. You, you got a plan that's going to get you into a comfort zone when God's got a calling in your life. I told y'all, I do not want to be in Atlanta today. No disrespect to Atlanta. I love Atlanta. It's like Wakanda. I love Atlanta. Every time I come here, people be like, E, what's up, bro? We see the videos, bro. We see what you're doing. <laughs> I love it when I come here, bro. One dude was like, E, why you even walking through the airport? You should be on a private jet. But we love you for flying with us, bruh. Yes, I love Atlanta. But I got a church in Lansing. We live in California. My wife, like, we already divided. God done told you another division. But I don't get to make the rules. I don't get to say because I like Michigan and my mama live there and my wife mama live there and our cousins live there and our aunties live there. I don't make the rules. I have a gift and I have to be obedient to the gift. As a matter of fact, Jeremy, when you said Atlanta, I said Atlanta, they got other churches in Atlanta. I ain't trying to come there and cause no problems. But I said, I don't care what you're trying to cause. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This, my, this, this anointing belongs to me. I tell you where to go and when to go and you obey what I tell you to do. I don't care where you want to be. I'm going to tell you this, if your, way, if, if your ways don't please me, <laughs> your enemies ain't going to be at peace with you. <laughs> and you ain't going to get the desires of your heart. So I don't know where you plan on being today. But my, it's my baby girl birthday. We celebrating it here. I had other gods said, I don't care who birthday it is and what plans you had and what y'all was going to do. You're doing it in Atlanta. <laughs> Pack your stuff. <laughs> You going to Atlanta, as for you and your house, <laughs> your son going to be in Atlanta, your daughter going to be in Atlanta, your wife, all y'all in Atlanta. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? And if we all do what we're supposed to do, he's going to bless all of us uniquely. There are those of you in this room, you are racing toward your comfort zone when God is calling you to a calling that he has on your life. And once you get to the calling and get out his way and get out your way, you're going to be blessed. Glory. Watch this, y'all. Let me tell you something. Go to the next slide. This is crazy. When you get in your anointing, my boy sent me this yesterday, I, you know, Friday night, Sabbath, so I couldn't go. And my boy sent this to me right here. He said, uh, uh, Creed 3, I'm going to go tonight. Creed 3, I said right there, special, uh, uh, spe special, or whatever, it's the consulting. Michael B. Jordan put, gave, put me in the credits as his consultant. Eric D. Thomas, a.k.a. the hip hop. Are you, God said, when your ways please me, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do stuff that you ain't even spoke, you ain't even, you, you uh, to who? Michael B. Dr to what? You ain't no actor, amen. CJ said, you the only actor that I know that ain't in there acting, but you acting. How in the world you get to the, but when you do, when you please the Lord and do what God tell you to do, your problem is you got your own plan and you keep coming up short on your own plan, yet you keep doing your own plan because we're so ignorant that even though the plan ain't working, we're so married to our will that we're going to do it anyway. It didn't blew up in your face. You an addict now. It didn't blew up in your face and you still doing it. You done lost every single thing doing that and you still doing it. You didn't lost your left your wife. You didn't have some other. She didn't told you. She told tell me your hair. You didn't told it was your hair. She didn't cut your hair off. You didn't lost your kids. You didn't lost your job. You didn't got your hair cut. You Samson. You a slave now. At what point do you stop? 
Is it not enough when the first, the, the, when the soldiers come in the first time? <laughs> That wasn't enough. The second time they come in, then she started crying, tell me your secret. Samson, when is it enough? Stop. Your plan is taking you to destruction. And can I say this, y'all? This is what's so crazy. That when you do it your own way, and you fight God, and you go through all that hell, Samson, at the end of the day, you're still going to fulfill your mission. Just without the rewards. You still got to do what you told. You still going to kill them. You still going to be the judge that God called you to be. You just not going to get the rewards for it. Stop. So let's go to the word. I want to show y'all something in the word today. When you get a chance, go home and read this, right? This is deep, right? Forward. Which way are we going? Forward. Further. Onwards. Right? A, a successful conclusion. How many of y'all want a successful conclusion? Come on. How many of y'all want y'all babies to have a successful conclusion? So watch what it says. So y'all, y'all read this. This is a story of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. He told him, go to Nineveh. It's a great city. Cry out against the city. All right? Let them know. They ain't doing the right thing. Amen? Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Listen to me very closely. There are those of you in this room. Be honest. How many of you have God has given an assignment to? Like Jonah, he told you to do something and you refuse to do it. Just be honest. I just want to see your hand. Mine is up too, just in case you didn't see. I was on some dumb stuff. Good. Hands down. Watch this. But Jonah rose to flee. He going in the other direction. Forward. I didn't even make this up. CJ was like, E, we should call it forward. I didn't even know contextually what. I was like, okay, God, I'm going to follow C. He make better decisions than me. But between me and you, Lord, I don't even know why we're calling it forward. But I'm going to be obedient, though. But I'm not really, like, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why forward. Then this week, he brought it to me. That as the people of God, you should always be going forward. Every day of your life, you should be going forward. I just want to put something on y'all real quick. I'm not against anybody. I know I've been talking aggressive lately. When you hit 50, it's, it's stuff change. <laughs> you don't have the tolerance. <laughs> you don't have the patience that you used to have. You don't care. <laughs> you realize you're about to die. <laughs> you like my life is sh- my time is short here. I don't have time for this stuff no more. I mean, I used to wonder all the time, like why my aunties them when they were like 50, I'm like they cranky. <laughs> they always seem like they irritable. They weren't like that when they was in their 30s. What's wrong? I know now. 50. <laughs> it has come upon me. And I'm not interested anymore. Listen to me very closely. I'm not interested. So I want you to understand something. So now I I only hang around people who are going forward. People who want to talk negative and they they don't, this ain't that and this ain't, I'm good, boo. Go ahead. Have y'all a little negative party. And y'all stay right there having it. As for me and mine, we're going forward. We're going forward. I'm I'm only going forward. Amen. I'm not interested in what you think about what God told me to do. God told me to do it. We're not about to have a conversation about, we're not going to have a board meeting about what God told me to do. We're not, we're not going to discuss it. This is what God told me to do. I'm going forward. If you want to go forward with me, amen, come on. When, when MBJ called me and told me to come to LA, I wasn't on no, well, I have a schedule right now. God was like, yo, this is the opportunity. The door about to open. Get on that plane and get to and sit in that room and wait for him. <laughs> like, for real, I wasn't on no big time stuff. Like, how long he gonna be before he comes see me? I just was like, I'm, what, do you need anything? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, nope. Just let me know when it's time for me to come in. We did our thing. I didn't ask for a picture. I ain't asked for no video. I went in there and done, did exactly what I was told to do, and then I left. And then I got a phone call. E, we're going to be on the credits. I'm like, that's all I need is social proof. I'm about to be in movies now. <laughs> that's all I need. I'm just about to show everybody. All right, now look, I do, I do consult for movies. <laughs> Have you ever seen Creed 3? <laughs> okay, maybe Michael B. Jordan. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> Movie made a couple bills. <laughs> Your boy. I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 I played a part. <laughs> that role right there, that's me. <laughs> I'm just saying, God is like, yo, if you just do my will, why are you still on your will? 
Why are you still doing your will? It's not working. So Jonah's like, put it back up. Jo- watch what Jonah said. Unbelievable. Stop doing this. Jonah went in the opposite direction. Instead of going to Tarshish, he went to Joppa. Instead of doing what God told him, he found a ship. He paid. You will pay the fare when you don't do what God tells you to do. You, he got, you got to pay to go the wrong way. It costs to go the wrong way. It's free when you go God's way. You don't pay nothing when you go God's way. They're all inclusive when you go God's way. Everything is paid for. Give me one of those, give me one of those, and my friend will have two. <laughs> hey, hey, let me just tell y'all something. If you want to sing big time, take a person that ain't never went on a trip before, take them on one of them all inclusive boys. They don't know. They thinking like, is that, that right there? <laughs> Bro, go ahead and get all of it. I got you. <laughs> it's all on me. I'm just being real, y'all. Watch this. You think I'm playing. So I was on the plane the other day, first class, by the grace of God. There's a young girl on the plane. She couldn't be more than 10 years old, 11 years old. Somebody paid for her to fly first class. She didn't even know what was going on. I love it. Dave, I love it. I was watching the whole thing. She didn't even know. So the lady came and was like, you want something to drink? And I watched her look at the lady like, then she kind of looked at me like, can I have something to drink? I'm like, yeah, you can have something to drink. <laughs> So she was getting her little drinks, little girl. Then a lady came back and was like, so we're going to have a meal. Here are the three choices. She gave us the three choices. She left and little mama looked at me and was like, is that free? I said, it's all yours, baby girl. I don't know who paid for you to be on here, but whoever paid for you in this seat. Oh, you missed what I just said. When Jesus died on the cross for our sins, all of us paid for. When Jesus spread his blood on the cross, on the old rugged cross, when he got on the cross for God so loved the world, that is all paid for. For God so loved the world that he gave, it's all paid for. You can have a good life, and you can have a good life, and your sins are forgiven, and your sins are forgiven, and you, and I got a plan for you, and I got a plan for you, and I got a calling for you, and I got a calling for you, all y'all got. Just follow my will. It's all inclusive. It's all paid for. You ain't got to pay a dime. Just find your butt on the seat. I ain't going to put you in the seat, but if you can get to the seat, it's all paid for. I ain't going to force you to get on the plane. But if you get on the plane, it's all paid for. It's all in there. I ain't hanging with nobody that ain't going forward no more. I don't want to have the backwards conversations no more. I'm not interested. You have your little backwards with you by yourself. I'm only hanging out with people who are going forward. I ain't got a lot of time here on this earth. I want the rest of it to be blessed. You know what hurts? When I realized that all this time I should have been flying first class. I was the one who went to the back of the bus, doing some back of the bus foolishness. Paying for the back of the bus foolishness. I said, who told you? Why why are you back there? In your mama's womb before you was born, I called you up here. I told you you was royal. I know, I know your daddy didn't want you, but he didn't have to call you royal. I, didn't, I wasn't waiting for him to call you royal before you were considered royal. I called you royal before your daddy even knew that he was having a son. And even though he ain't sure you his, I'm certain that you mine. You, he might have some doubts. I ain't got no doubts. <laughs> he might have some doubts. He might not know if you yours. Not. He might have some doubts. He might not raise you because he don't believe. He might not want to fight your mama for you, but I fought the devil for you. He might not want to press through, but Jesus pressed through. Your daddy may not have wanted to do it, but I did it. You walking around here like you ain't nobody. You listening to the enemy talk that backwards talk, and now you surrounding yourself with people who talking that backwards talk. I don't hang with them no more. Don't come to me with that foolishness. We talking forwards, onwards. Come on, who was at the mastermind with me yesterday? Where y'all at? Stand up. I want y'all to see the mastermind, folks. We was talking, we was talking some forward talk yesterday. We weren't talking no backwards talk, were we? We were talking forward talk. Huh? We about to do some big stuff. We was talking some force. Can I tell y'all what's so crazy? Wait, where are you? You said to me that you don't know your what? You don't know what your gifts are. 
That's what you told me, right? And you told me you was looking for somebody to help you to figure out what your gifts are, right? And I told you I was going to try to help you find somebody. But I was going to try to help, some, help you find somebody that lived in your city so they could be there for you. And you told me you was from where? San Diego. <laughs> I told her, I, then I got you. If you in San Diego, I'm in San Diego. Then I got you. Now, I'm not going to come to where you are, but I'm going to tell you where I am. And if you show up, you're about to get first-class treatment. You ain't got to go to one of the other coaches. You're about to get the first-class treatment. If you where I'm at, if you live where I'm at, then I thought I'm going to turn my daughter on to you. If you where I'm at, and if you get turned on to my daughter, then my wife probably going to get involved. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? You got first-class before you even knew you had first-class. Get your butt out the back. Some of y'all still in the back. Some of y'all young, you don't know about, you know, trailways or Greyhound, you're young. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to be Greyhound back where the bathroom was. It was a terrible experience. Greyhound, number one, is a terrible experience. Dave, I actually took it, Dave, from Miami when we were in Miami all the way to Chicago. It was a terrible experience. And I was in the bath, back at the bathroom. And you know anything about Greyhound, those people ain't tripping about using on the bathroom. It's something about the Greyhound people, they don't have no etiquette, like they ain't on that. They going in there, you buy all that dance to crib. Ba 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 ba. Boom. And me and my girl right there. We've been on the plane ever since that trip. <laughs> we've made this sacrifice. <laughs> Whatever it costs, we paid the price. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? You still in the back. When he paid for the front. You have absolutely no right to be in the back because he paid for the front. He paid for a first class seat and because of our low self-esteem, because the devil has convinced us of some dumb stuff, you didn't walk past where your name was. Your name was in the seat in first class and you didn't walk past your name and you didn't go somewhere that you have no business being. You have no business in the pig pen. Get your butt up. Go home. I love it. My man was like, I'll just go back as a servant. <laughs> My father has servants, and I will be one of the servants. Daddy been standing. Dad, come on, I want y'all to understand some. All right, I know I got a time frame, but give me some. Let me do this. I came all the way here. My other church, it'd be about 30 people. So you got to forgive me when you get five, six, I get excited. <laughs> I won't get this for another month. So I just get, allow me, if you will, as to bask in this. Listen to me, I want you, some of us got it twisted. The devil is such a liar. The devil convinced the young man, you messed up so bad that what you should do is at least go back home to be a servant. I love it. I love the Bible. Stop making the Bible deeper than what it is. Just read it for what it is. Is God trying to show you how much he loves you? While he in the pig pen every day on some dumb stuff, daddy's coming out every day. No, read the Bible. His father did not come out the day he came home. His father came out every, a part of his routine. Was getting up every single day. I got a son. I know what the Bible's talking about. Every day his father would get up and he had a routine. Instead of doing his work, instead of doing the stuff that he would normally do, he spent a considerable amount of time going outside, going down as far as he could, and he was looking for his son. Where's my son? Every day when you ain't where you're supposed to be, don't think God is just chilling. Don't think God's waiting on you. He's actively pursuing you. He's actively coming after you. And every single day, the Bible says he would come outside and he would look for his son and he would go inside when his son wasn't there and he'd start over every morning just like it ain't never happened before. He had love amnesia. And just because he went out for a month and his son wasn't there, he started over the next month like it was his first time doing it. And one day he went out. Hallelujah. He cares about you. 
He cares about your bank account. He cares about your relationships. He cares about your health. He cares about your emotional mental health. He's just not a God full of rules and regulations. He just ain't waiting for you to come to heaven. He didn't bring you here to make you suffer. He brought you here to live the life he called you to live and then we're going to go up there without interruption. And one day he came out That's my boy. He's, that's my boy. Go, go get the fattest cat. Get the best cat. Go, go get a ring. Go, hurry up. Go get a robe. Hurry up, hurry up. My baby's home. He's home mentally. He's home emotionally. He home fit. He home. We gonna throw a party. Let's celebrate. He's back. I ain't got to go back outside and look for him no more. He's home. Nowhere in the word did it say he told him to go take a shower before he put his stuff on him. <laughs> Nowhere did it say he reprimanded him. Where have you been? Why did you take uh, my money and leave? He said, my son is home. My baby is home. He back. He's back mentally. He's back. The devil had him, but he's back emotionally. He's back. Let's celebrate. Daddy's ready to celebrate. You think he's ready to punch you. He's ready to celebrate you. He got a ring with your name on it. You ain't got to wait for no man to get you. He already got a ring with your name on it. He got a wardrobe. He got, he ready to throw a party. Let's go quickly. Let's go. I know I'm, I'm about 30. Oh, they stopped. I, love, oh, I thought they stopped. <laughs> let's go. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. I'm, let me race through this and let you get out of here. I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Uh, let's go to the next one. Number one, God directs us if we let him. But listen to me very closely. Make sure you read this when you get home. Psalms 139, 7 through 9. You make your bed in hell. Lo, I'm with you. But the word says, if you make your bed in hell, it ain't no way you could go that I'm not going to go follow you. His presence is wherever you go. Here, here's the deal. Get a reward for his presence, though. Stop, stop being rebellious. Stop fighting him and get on one accord. Get out the comfort zone and get in the calling zone. Uh, come on, somebody. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah. Amen. God is constantly thinking about us and is concerned with the details of our lives. I want you to understand that. No, for real, for real. Some of y'all, you like, God love me. God love me at church. God love me. No, 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 no. Every part. I got any parents in here? Can I just, can you? Parents, y'all know. Listen to me very closely. I tell my kids all the time. My daughter, dad, you didn't call me five times. Stop calling me. I'm like, I promise you if I could, I would. <laughs> know any parents know what I'm talking about? I promise you if I could stop calling you, I would, call, I would stop calling you. My son, dad, you smart. It's like you think about me every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like every day you calling to see him. I'm all right. Not every day. I'm like, son, I wish I could think about you once a week. It would be so much easier. No, y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I got any parents that know what I'm talking about? I wish I could just think about you once a month, like a bill. I do. I, no, no. Y'all know what I'm talking about as parents. I don't mean this in an evil way. I wish your well-being didn't consume my life. I wish. I wish you could go out and do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. And whatever consequences come, it don't bother me. I wish that was the case. But I think about you all the doggone time. Why? Because you are the center of my joy. Oh, I need you to understand that you can't, you, I don't care what sins you do. You can't get God off, you can't get you off God's mind. You can't. No matter how rebellious you are, no matter how many walls you place up, you just can't get God to stop thinking about you and caring about you and wanting the best for you. How many of y'all, even when you're doing what you ain't even supposed to be doing, you be seeing God bless you and you be like, yup, I, that's, yup, yup. <laughs> like, yup, I ain't even deserve it. He just threw that. He just gonna make me love him. 
he ain't going to shower me with blessings regardless. I mean, for real, let's be honest. How many of y'all, it's just like some stuff you didn't took to God, even though you ain't doing church. And I don't even mean like physically just coming. I mean like coming and reading your Bible and like loving him and caring. You just didn't gave up on God and he still just be throwing treats out at you. Still be just gifts that you ain't even know what's coming. Just stuff and you just like, God, would you just stop? I'm not trying to love you right now. <laughs> I'm not trying, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm church hurt. He's like, okay, you can be as church hurt as you want. That don't got nothing to do with me. I, don't be hurt with me. Yeah, you can be hurt with that church if you want to. That ain't got nothing to do with me. But I ain't do that. They did that. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He's constantly thinking about you in every detail of your life, which is why he tell you to drink more water. Because <laughs> he cares. You drinking pop. You're like, please stop. I want you to be around longer. Please go get you some fresh air. Come on, I'm not talking to anybody. Please go exercise. I want you around. I can't stand exercising. I'm like, I don't want Dee to have to be pushing me around. She might get even if she be pushing me around. I want to be able to walk on my own. She like, uh-huh, you crippled? Nah, I got you right where I wanted you. I don't get no food or nothing. You better stay healthy. Amen. Hey man, let's go. Come on, give me the next one. I'm going to get y'all out of here, I promise. Hey Amen. Our relationship, not our knowledge, our relationship with God affects every area of our life. For those of us who do not have a healthy relationship with God, it means you have one with the enemy. I'm just being real. There ain't no other relationships. So if you don't have a relationship with God, you got a relationship with, with, with his enemy. And the enemy is trying to make you go backwards and you know it because you look at your life and you're always going backwards without God. No matter how many steps you take forward, when you're not in right relationship with God, you keep going backwards. The enemy don't care for you. And then what he, did, he does is he sends a bunch of backwards people to be in your life. Now y'all all going backwards. It's like a little backwards crew now. Y'all just the backward boys. <laughs> I just need to get a little jacket. <laughs> You find y'all a little some steps to do. Y'all all backwards. <laughs> y'all all backwards. Come with the forward folk. Come with the people that love God. We, he constantly telling us which way to go. He's constantly directing our path. He's constantly looking out. He's constantly saying, look, you on the road. You can't see. I'm all the way up here. There's a, there's a car accident ahead. Get off the main road. Take that side, boy. Don't leave at five. You're going to be in a bunch of traffic. Just stay to eight. You leave at eight, you just gonna run. Anybody ever, you had a plan and your plan didn't work and then you end up thinking it was bad and then God end up blessing you more in the waiting than if you would've got on the road when you got on the road and now you about eight hours in the hole. You eight hours in traffic. You would've just left late, you would've got there in about an hour and a half. This is God, let him direct you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, praise God, I feel my wife. You feel me? Just no. She's like, hurry up. I just feel her. I don't even see her face. I just I, I sense her presence. <laughs> like Star Wars is the her, is strong. Her, the, the force inside of her is strong. I, I feel it like right here. <laughs> she, she over there. Then she right here. Some of you have no direction. You have no clarity. You lack a clear vision for yourself. God wants to give you the vision for your life. You don't have to be clueless anymore. Here's what happens as a result. You're not capitalizing on your daily 24-hour blessings. God gave you 24 hours, and when you look at your 24 hours, you ain't doing a whole lot with it. God wants to bless you to show you what to do with your life. He's going to show you what you should be doing every hour on the hour. He's going to bless you, and you're going to be so productive. Watch this. You're not capitalizing on your God-given gifts. Who knew I was a consultant for Michael B. Jordan? Who knew? You know what I'm saying? God did. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, talk back to me. God did, and God know the next movie. Oh, come on. I'm not playing. God knows the next movie. Amen. So a lot of you not using your God-given gifts because you're rebellion against God. And anytime you rebel against God, you automatically cut off the fountain. Your fountain has been cut off for years. You're just doing it your way. Ain't nothing but dirt coming out that joker. Just stop fighting God and let's let him, let him flow through you. And you're failing to make the most 
of your fiscal opportunities. You know how much money I'm making just using my God-given abilities? I didn't gave away. I got 11 years of free content that I, I just gave it away. I'm so blessed now. I got people coming saying, yo, E, bro, I want to pay you $100,000 a year just to have you coach me. Times that by a thousand. God, like, you ain't even got to speak no more if you don't want to. This is what happened when you use your gifts. It just doors start opening up that you didn't even know would open up. I would, wretch, I would much rather coach than I would do corporate work. You're not blessed because you're like Jonah. You're running from God instead of running toward God. You are so obsessed with the comfort zone when you need to get in the calling zone. Let's go. All right. I got two more and we out. Then I need a favor. All right. Everybody say seven. All right, I'm going to need a favor. Hold that. Seven. All right, good. So number two, the challenge is some of you have painted a vivid picture and path for your own life, but it's flesh-led. Oh, come on. Talk back to me. It's flesh-led. <laughs> oh, like you deep and you got it going on, but you're doing your own thing. You're not doing God's thing. You, you're doing what you gifted at, not what he called you to be gifted at. And you're using your gifts, but you're not using them for him. You're using them for yourself. And you sweet doing it. But it's still not God-led. It's self-centered. It's not God-centered. So here's what happens. You're self-centered, and you're not in alignment with what God has designed for your life. Which is why you're unfulfilled, angry, and spinning your wheels. Some of you are upset in life. You're upset because you're not doing what God wants you. There's no, listen to me. You can't be in Christ and do what he tells you to do and you stressed out. Stress comes from misalignment with God. Some part of your life is in misalignment. If I go to the hospital and my blood pressure is not what it's supposed to be, it means that I'm not in alignment with my body. My body is saying, I want this. My taste buds is saying, I want that Baja Blast at Taco Bell in the large boy. <laughs> I want that large boy. Amen. I'm not in alignment with my body, but glucose levels to wither. <laughs> my body is like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? This is nasty. We're not in alignment. So when my blood pressure or my sugar go, because we're not in alignment. Oh, come on, talk back to me. Don't be, I'm going to give it all to you. We're not going to play no game. I'm going to give it all to you. You just want the money. But what good is the money when you got cancer? Oh. What good is the money when you got diabetes? What's good, what good is the money when you can't travel and eat nothing because you didn't eat everything at once? <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with eating some of that stuff, but you've been eating it for 40 years every day. Your body is like, hold up, bro. <laughs> when we going to get some green vegetables up off of here? It's like, this ain't even 86 octane. <laughs> you putting like 72 in this joker. Give me some water. Amen? Let's go. All right. So here's the final one. Here's the final one. Here's what we're trying to get to, the final challenge. For some of you, your heart's desire is to surrender fully to the maker, to daddy. How many of y'all ready to do that? How many of y'all ready to do that? Amen. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for the appeal. Play for me, please. Get, get them ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. Amen. How many of y'all are ready? Do this. Okay, let's do this. I'm gone. I promise. This ain't, I'm not about to be another 10 minutes. I promise. But I need you to be honest. How many of you are in category one? For whatever reason, church hurt, there's something happened in your life, and you honestly haven't really, really been connected to the creator in the way you need to be. Just be honest and let me see your hands. You haven't been connected. So come on. Let me be high. I need to see. Be honest. Hands down. How, how many of you, number two, you, you, you like, yo, I'm going to be successful. And you've been doing it without fully surrendering to Christ. You got a plan and you got, I'm going to go real estate. Nothing wrong with real estate. I'm going to go speaking. Nothing wrong with speaking. But it may not be God's plan for you. Good, hands down. Thank you for your honesty. How many of you from today, God, I'm not saying that I'm going to get it right, but I'm ready to get ready to make a commitment to start fully following you. That's what I want to do. Let me see your hands. Amen. Come on, let me see your hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God some praise. Thank you so much for joining us this week. 
For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our Cash App, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus right here on Facebook. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.